Hello, welcome to Mideast in Death, part of Levant TV's Press Reviews. Charles Crothomer writes an opinion piece in the Washington Post. The title says a lot. The writer questions boldly, do we really mean never again? And this is, of course, in reference to the Jewish Holocaust in Auschwitz. Crothomer says, amid the ritual expressions of regret and the pledges of never again on Tuesday's 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, a bitter irony was noted. Antisemitism has returned to Europe. And with a vengeance, he says it has become a routine. If the kosher grocery massacre in Paris hadn't happened in conjunction with Charlie Hebdo, how much worldwide notice would it have received? As little as did the murder of a rabbi and three children at a Jewish school in Toulouse, as little as did the terror attack that killed four at the Jewish Museum in Brussels. And according to the writer, the rise of European anti-Semitism is, in reality, just a return to the norm. He says, for a millennium, vir virulent Jew hatred, persecution, expulsions, massacres was the norm in Europe until the shame of the Holocaust created a temporary anomaly wherein anti-Semitism became socially unacceptable. European anti-Semitism is not a Jewish problem, he says. However, it's a European problem, a stain, a disease of which Europe is congenitally unable to rid itself. He notes the threat to the Jewish future lies not in Europe, but in the Muslim Middle East. Today, the heart of global anti-Semitism, a veritable factory of anti-Jewish literature, films, blood libels and calls for violence, indeed for another genocide. The writer adds, the founding charter of Hamas calls not just for the eradication of Israel, but for the killing of Jews everywhere. And Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah welcomes Jewish immigration to Israel because it makes the killing easier. He quotes him, if Jews are all gathered in Israel, it will save us the trouble of going after them worldwide. And the writer concludes on the 70th anniversary of Auschwitz, mourning dead Jews is easy. And he says, forgive me, cheap. But he adds, want to truly honor the dead, show solidarity with the living. Israel and its six million Jews make, quote, never again, more than an empty phrase. It took Nazi Germany seven years to kill six million Jews. And then he adds, it would take a nuclear Iran one day. Ben Kaspert writes an article in the Washington-based Al Monitor. He believes on the morning of the January the 29th, a round in the regional war between Israel and Iran, and Iran's proxies, Hezbollah and Syria in that order, ended in a tactical draw, but with a prominent strategic victory for Israel. A tactical draw stems from the fact that, according to foreign media sources, Israel destroyed two Hezbollah and Syrian vehicles on January the 18th, and in retaliation, Hezbollah destroyed two IDF vehicles. A strategic victory was declared because Hezbollah killed a Jivati infantry brigade officer and soldier. This is a painful loss, especially in Israeli society, which is very sensitive to the loss of its soldiers, even more than its civilians. Let me add here that on the other side, Hezbollah declared that the number of civilian casualties and military casualties in Israel was much more. But according to Kaspert, significant and substantial damage was leveled on Iranian Hezbollah efforts to establish another front vis-à-vis -vis Israel on the Golan Heights, a front that was supposed to be risk-clean and a few serious dangers. It will take Hezbollah time to recreate this undertaking while knowing that Israel is vigilantly keeping close tabs on developments and will not hesitate to use force when it reaches the conclusion that the infrastructure being constructed in its vicinity is nearing the danger point. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defence Minister Moshe Yalon made a very difficult decision the night of January 28th. At this point, all their considerations, security and political, united in one single vortex. According to the IDF intelligence, Hezbollah made a real effort to retaliate in a way that would allow Israel to, quote, contain its own response to not go overboard and thus allow all the players to leave the corners they had painted themselves into. Ben Kaspitz adds, Iran and Hezbollah have only one strategic objective in the region and none other, which is preserving Assad's regime in its current reduced configuration. All other interests are subordinated to this one. He concludes at the moment a frontal conflict with Israel would only endanger Assad even more, almost certainly leading to his final collapse, so the confrontation is postponed to be continued. And. Uh, on this article, uh, which was a bit controversial, there were a lot of comments that perhaps disagree widely with the writer. But anyway, we'll leave it up to you. For more comments, please uh, visit levant.tv. You could also subscribe to Middle East In Depth on iTunes. 
Thanks for watching Medici in depth and bye for now.